All right, good evening. Uh, this is the October 16th uh, Cottage Grove City Council meeting, which I am calling to order. Uh, the first order of business this evening is the Pledge of Allegiance, so please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, will the uh, clerk please do the roll? Councilmember Mills? Here. Councilmember Dennis? Here. Councilmember Thede? Here. Councilmember Butt? Mayor Bailey? Here. All right, next on our agenda this evening is open forum. This is the opportunity for anybody to speak on something that is not on tonight's agenda. Uh, we did have a sign up sheet out in the entryway, and we did have two uh, individuals that signed up. Uh, and so we'll just kind of go in that order first, and we'll see if there's anybody else. So, uh, uh, Mr. John Coyman at 6749 Geneva in Cottage Grove here, uh, right up at the front there. Thank you, Mayor and City Council members. Um, so a little background for the folks in the audience, maybe watching at home. Um, up in the northwest corner of, of Cottage Grove, there's a, a new brown medium density parcel on the 2040 comprehensive plan. To me and my neighbors, it seems very out of place. If you look up spot zoning, it should give you a pretty good idea of, of what happened. The end result is there is now a plan moving forward to place a 98 unit townhome development on the corner of 65th and Geneva. Mm -hmm. That development needed the medium density designation to take place first. I've been asking some questions about how the medium density designation happened and had a few more questions tonight. And I, I did formally ask if there was a 2040 comp plan application on file for the Pasavads who owned this property and was told no. The change was part of the overall comprehensive plan review process. So, and and please don't even ask me to believe that the city council comp plan adjustment for this parcel by sheer coincidence matched up exactly with the Pasavab's first verbal wish. So it sounds like there's two paths for a comp plan change. You can do the normal citizen way where you fill out an application, you pay your $600, you sign it, you submit it, a lot of red tape there. There's, there's a second method apparently that's this verbal wish method. And this is where the Pasavads tell somebody associated with the city over the years that they have always wished for a medium density designation for their property. This person then remembers this verbal wish and gets the, that incorporated into the master comp plan. No documentation on who or why, no meeting minutes, no application, no payment, just a verbal wish that finds its way into the 2040 comp plan. Um, my first batch of questions were for Ms. Levitt. At the last City Council meeting, you mentioned that the Pasavads are longtime residents. Do they really live in Cottage Grove? I obviously don't know them as well as you do, but calling them residents seems to give the impression that this project is helping somebody who lives in the city. I'm just wondering where they actually reside. Um, in the last City Council meeting, you seem to tie the medium density designation in with the Pasavads' help in getting the school project done. Can you elaborate on, on how these two are related? In the last city council meeting, you also mentioned that the reason there is no comp plan documentation for this property change is because the Pasavads provided their wish verbally. So who received this verbal wish and when? And then somebody had to take that verbal wish, remember it, and turn it into a comp plan change. I'm wondering who that was. Next batch of questions were for Mr. Burbank or the planning department. and. I, my question is, is, is this pretty common where a private citizen's property is changed to a, a different designation without going through the normal application steps? And then when the Pasavads change was made, did anybody even question it? My next batch of questions is for um, Ms. Land. At the last city council meeting, you talked about following rules to avoid litigation. For the High Point project, the first thing you mentioned was having an application. The Pasavads never filled out an application. All we know is they made a, a verbal wish to someone who then got it pushed through the, the comp plan process. There does not appear to be any normal documentation leading up to the comp plan change. From the city's point of view, are, are you pretty comfortable with this? And just in case the pass of odds were to reapply through the normal citizen process, to me it seems like the city has shown some significant bias towards the pass of odds property designation. Is there a different governing body we would go through to make sure the neighbors and I got a fair shake if they were to reapply? 
this whole verbal wish passing through under the comp plan with no initial documentation does not leave me with a good feeling. If I wanted to involve a government body outside of the city of Cottage Grove, who would I contact to have them confirm that the changes made here were all done properly? Last batch questions were for the city council members. In the span of 20 days, I left each of you two phone messages asking you to call me back on this topic. I also sent each of you an email on the same. Eight phone calls and not a single call back. I did receive one email back from council member Dennis with a response that was unrelated to anything on the, on the four questions I had asked. Perhaps each of you could explain why you didn't respond. Are you uncomfortable with what occurred here? Mayor Bailey, I have no beef with you. I left a message, you called me back, we discussed my concerns, I really appreciated that. So I did write down my questions if you wanna yeah, if you, copy of those. That would be great, yes. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, next on our, uh, on the, uh, that signed up uh, out in the uh, entryway is John uh, Stuchkon. And John lives at 9263 Military Road in Cottage Grove, and he has a question about the Ravine Parkway assessments, which is technically on tonight's agenda, but we are, are uh, not going to, we're moving the, the, uh, uh, the public hearing, we're uh, moving, I guess I'd say moving it forward uh, due to the fact, I'm looking for it now. Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, so they're continuing it to the November 6, 2019, and I think you had a question about that. And did they give you a mic? Okay. I'm just raising up here a little bit. Okay, thank you. Okay, and that's 9263 Military Road. So with this special assessment meeting that's supposed to take place tonight, the reason it's not taking place is because the city violated state statute 429, which requires the city to send each parcel of land that's going up for the assessment a letter two weeks prior to the meeting. On October 2nd, the city published it in the Washington County Bulletin that the meeting would take place tonight. In a letter I received August 9th with my deferred assessment saying please sign, not please sign, but sign or else you're gonna be assessed. In that letter, it stated October 16th, the meeting would take place. On October 3rd, I called Ryan and I said, Ryan, what's this meeting about? Because I had not received a letter. So I thought, well, maybe it's not where I think they're at. And he explained the process that was going to take place. I said, oh, you are in phase two of the assessment. I said, you're already in violation of state statute 429. He said, oh, I, I gotta go talk to finance. I said, give me the number, I'll talk to him myself. He called me back a half hour later and said, John, you're absolutely right. We're gonna change the meeting to November 6th. Now, you're violating the state statute right off the bat, even though the assessment is a violation, and I won't get into that, I'll see you um, November 6th. But you're already in violation. You, you published it in the paper, I called and told you you were in violation, and that's why you moved the meeting. All right, thank you. Did you wanna speak on anything, uh, our administrator, uh, Jennifer Levitt on this item? Mayor, members of the council, Mr. Stetchkon is, is correct in the sense that um, we did have a clerical error in regards to the mailing. Uh, it was, we had anticipated 10 days, but he's absolutely correct, it's 14 days. And obviously we want to ensure that residents have all of their due process to ensure that they have the adequate notice. And so uh, we did delay that to ensure that proper notice could be given and that we're not in violation of chapter 429. And I do know that maybe the legal counsel would like to add um, a few other additional remarks. Yeah. So your honor, um, Mr. Stachkon is correct that if you don't 
uh, follow the law exactly. It is a violation of state law. However, we are. It is on tonight's agenda, just in case there are people who did not know that it would be continued. So they could show up tonight, and then the public hearing, they will, they will find out when it's going to be continued to, so they know when they can come back. That is allowed by state law to continue a public hearing. So it is on your agenda tonight. That is, is exactly what should happen under the law. And then we would recommend that you continue it to November 6th so that everybody can have their opportunity to be heard on that date. Okay. Thank you. Just one last comment. Yes. It takes a person being assessed to call you guys and tell you you're in violation. All right. So thank you, John. Is there anybody else that did not sign up that would like to speak on open forum this evening? All right, seeing none, I'm gonna go ahead and close uh, open forum and we'll move to number five, which is adoption of the agenda. Move the agenda. All right, so we have a motion by Council Member Thede. Second. Second by Council Member Dennis. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number six is presentations. There are none this evening. Uh, number seven is consent calendar. Is there items that council would like to pull on consent? I'll start with uh, council member Mills. I'll pull letter D, please. Letter D. And then I think I saw uh, council member Dennis. I'll do letter H. Letter H. We have some fun ones tonight. <laughs> Anything? No, I'm good. You're good? All right. Seeing no, no other ones, I will then go ahead and just start with uh, council member Mills. And it's uh, we're accepting some donations. Yes, we have some donations tonight. Uh, some folks may not realize that you can make a donation to the city. It can be a small donation, large donation. No do donation is too small or too large. We do have a couple donations that came in. The first one on my list here is Total Mechanical Services. It's for the grand opening of the ice arena, which I think we'll be mentioning later on tonight. Yep. Uh, for $500, and then we also have a donation from the VFW Post 8752 in Cottage Grove, and that is for the welcome to our Purple Heart Community signs for $600. So we thank our uh, folks that donated or companies that have donated. We greatly appreciate that. All right, thank you. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I know every city, seems like all the cities around us now are joining us in the yep. Purple Heart. We're going to get this extra sign, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, Council Member Dennis, you want to talk about some goats? Uh, thank you, Mayor. <laughs> I, I do want to talk about some goats. And uh, so first off, I, I want to say that what has taken place here is really a, a great example of community involvement working with the local government to make something happen. So what's, uh, what's before us is an opportunity to, uh, to pass an ordinance that would allow for uh, goats to be brought in in certain circumstances where they could come in and uh, eat things like buckthorn and other invasive plant species and then uh, really affect a good process by not introducing harmful chemicals into our environment. So this is a really good thing from my perspective and I, I really, uh, I personally enjoyed uh, the, the folks in the community who came in and approached us here and, and brought this to our attention. I thought they, uh, they did a very, very respectful job of doing that. And, and that's, that's something that really works for us. So it was uh, great to see that happen. So right now we've got a number of points here um, that are up for consideration to map the ordinance. The first one is up to four goats on parcels that are 10,000 square feet or less. One additional goat would be allowed for every 1,000 square feet over the 10,000. Uh, the next is fencing of sufficient height to contain the goats, followed by uh, completing the goat grazing application with review and approval by the city clerk and code enforcement officer. Next is written consent of 75% of the property owners within 150 feet of the grazing area. Now that they're indicating collected and submitted by the permit applicant. So that's, that's the one piece of this that I had a little bit of a challenge with. Uh, looking at the four communities that we had compared ourselves or, or measured them, um, in the, in the uh, staff report here, uh, fully four out, I think it's four, four or five out of seven had no requirement to do 75% or more at all. And I think in the spirit of you know, looking at this, what this is is really a, a service issue. Should be no different for a person taking care of the property, whether you call, uh, if your garage door spring breaks, you call the garage door company. If you've got a leak, you call your plumber. Okay, <clears throat> what I'd like to see it be treated 
as is an opportunity where folks could call and work with a company who would come here, complete an application process, be licensed and bonded, so that they've provided to the city their, their uh, proof of diligence and such upfront, and then basically eliminate the need for the property owner to go out and get this consent. Um, again, the majority of communities uh, that we surveyed or looked at that have something on the books did not have that as a requirement. So I feel it's just a little bit of, a, of an overreach here, and I, but I know and understand the, the good-natured uh, background as to why they wanted to do that. But, you know, without having staff go out and actually collect those signatures, we really have no real means of verifying if they actually were even the signatures of people that were living close by. So looking at uh, the, the workload that we have already on code enforcement, um, I, just, I just think this would, would complicate and would add uh, some extra challenges to this process that maybe don't need to have happen. Uh, as far as grazing, uh, limited to 30 consecutive days, no more than 60 within a calendar year. I did reach out um, to some folks from the county who have uh, worked uh, in processing uh, the goat grazing program right here in the Ravine Park. And uh, the, the, the one thing that was brought up, we're limiting, limiting this to four goats uh, for 30 days. And the thought was, well, you know, they brought in more than four. And I know they had a large area to deal with. If we, if we up that number a little bit, maybe we could get this done in less than 30 days. And that has less impact on the surrounding neighborhood and such. But, um, but what they do is they come out, they take down the vegetation, um, the roots try to grow the vegetation back, they invite them back at an appropriate time, eat the plant down again, and then what you kind of do is hope to go through that winter season and then have that uh, truly kill those plants off. So that's kind of how the process works. Um, so last is evidence of liability insurance um, to cover a million dollar uh, per occurrence issue if there's a problem that arises. And uh, I did reach out to my own insurance agent, and I, I had a little conversation about that and wanted to learn you know, what the cost for that would be. And for most people, if you've got an insurance program that bundles both your home and your car, most people already have a million dollars. If not, they can attain it for a fairly reasonable fee. Um, the worst case scenario that I was told from uh, my agent was that it would be up to $400 a, uh, a year if you didn't have anything. But if you do have a program already in place, it should be pretty reasonable to do. So I, I do fully support um, the program, but I'd love to see us take and change that consent issue of adjacent property owners, just pull that off and allow this to be treated um, as any other service company coming into the community. We would have already had our, our uh, due diligence and background by virtue of the, the licensing and bonding effort. And then uh, I think they could run the business quite nicely. So that's, that's the change I would seek to make on that. Okay. So what I'd like to do then, if, if you will, is uh, why don't we, uh, I'll, if, if there's nothing else to discuss on consent, why don't we, uh, I'll take a motion to approve consent minus uh, letter H, and then we can do that as a separate vote with any tweaks that council would like to make. Is that okay? Perfect. Mayor, I'll make that motion to approve everything on consent agenda except for letter H. We'll hold that over for a separate vote. All right, so I have a motion by Councilmember Dennis, second by Councilmember Thede. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now let's, uh, you wanna make a motion on I, your decision? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I would make motion to, uh, to pass ordinance 1014 enacting Cottage Grove City Code Title V, Chapter 4, Section 14, allowing for the temporary keeping of goats for vegetation management and amending the city fee table to add the permit fee. Additionally, I would recommend that we remove the line item that requires written consent of 75% of adjacent property owners. Within the 150, okay. Yep. So I, I have a motion by Council Member Dennis. Do I have a second? Second. A second, all right, so I have a second by Council Member Mills. Further discussion? Yeah. Yep, and um, do you have something you wanna add? I know staff I maybe wanna, does here. I wanna ask a question. Okay. Specifically, I wanna find out what was, you know, why did we put the, that statement in there? What was the reason for it? Uh, you know, um, where did it come from? Yeah. So, Mayor, members of the council, first of all, full disclosure, I have four goats. <laughs> um, they're, they're pets. Uh, but, so I know a little bit about them. So when we put this ordinance together, it was actually kind of fun because I know what I'm, what I'm talking about a little bit. 
Uh, but uh, my goats eat everything, so I wouldn't put them in anybody's yard uh, because they have no discretion, you know, siding, wood, uh, flowers. So uh, they can't, dis they have no discretion between buckthorn, you know, invasive species and things you actually want to keep. Um, but the couple of things I wanted to clarify for Councilmember Dennis, and uh, one is that we do not require a license for the goat company. That is not, that's not something that we currently license, so just be aware. Um, the insurance is actually, and maybe it wasn't clear, and I'm looking at the words now on the page, and I don't think it is, but the insurance should be from the goat company, not the homeowner. Right. So we intended that to be the uh, the company having a million dollars worth of insurance, which then we felt we wouldn't need to license them because they have a million dollars worth of insurance. Right. And the notice requirement to the neighbors was more of a courtesy. It's not hard to verify who owns those properties. Um, you know, you pull up property records within 150 feet, and then you can verify the address versus who signed uh, and, and check the signature to make sure, and the name to make sure that it's that person. You know, as best as you can. I mean, we wouldn't require a notarized statement, but but the thought was more of a courtesy. Um, if goats, frankly, do have a, an odor, uh, and it's noticeable, and so I I didn't I didn't object to putting that in there just because I think it is something that if you know if people don't like chickens, maybe they won't like goats either. And I thought it, it would be um, helpful to have notice to the neighbors so that they would have an opportunity to say. This really, I don't really want this next door to me. On the other hand, if you don't feel like like 75% of consent from the neighborhood, if that's too strict, maybe we just put in a that there would have to be a notice sent out to those neighbors, and the city could do that fairly easily. So that maybe would be a, a suggestion as um, an alternative. Okay, Councilmember Council Member Dennis. Thank you. Uh, well, we learned something new about you tonight. <laughs> um, so I really do like the idea of sending out the notice as opposed to, um, you know, going out and trying to get those signatures. Because, you know, again, w when you're dealing with a, a government entity, I mean, if you're going to treat one, you got to treat everyone the same, right? And so to to validate if that was legitimate, you'd really want to have oversight and go out and check to verify, and that would be a staff member going out, hey, do you approve of this process? Would you sign off on it? And we just don't have the staff capacity to do that. So um, so I would, be, uh, I would be completely good with us doing that. Now, I just have a quick question, uh, and, and we, can, we can wordsmith, um, you know, to make that line uh, come into compliance with the intention of having the company have the million dollars of insurance. But how much of a challenge or, or an issue would it be if we were to require those companies like other service contractors coming in to be licensed and bonded? Uh, Your Honor, the members of the council, I think the problem with licensing is that then we do have to have more staff time to, to license them personally. And so I think it would be easier if they're a company and they're a legit company, they're going to have insurance anyway. And so I don't know that the city needs to be monitoring those kinds of licenses for services. Like I said, we, we want people to use legitimate goat grazing companies, not people like me <laughs> who just have goats for a pet. Okay. So as long as staff is comfortable with that, I am too. So to go with so, what they're suggesting with the letters then? Instead yes. Of that, the, yes. So do you want me to amend that? Do you, do you want us to amend it? I mean, you, you have an idea. Yep. I think we understand the intent. Okay. okay. So if you're good with the intent, right. we can hold where it is. Perfectly then. good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? Nope. No. Nothing? Good. All right. All those in uh, favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So if you are here for anything on tonight's agenda, they're all approved. There you go. Oh, good. Are you going to be our first goats in Cottage Grove officially? <laughs> there you go. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, next on the agenda is number eight is approved disbursements. 8A is pay the bills. Motion to pay the bills. We have a motion by Councilmember Dennis. Second. Second by Councilmember Mills. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Nine is uh, public hearings. Uh, we have uh, three technical, I say, uh, public hearings this evening. A is the special assessment ravine parkway project, which this um, uh, a public hearing is going to be continued to the November 6, 2019. So um, I'm just going to ask the council to uh, make motion to continue 
the Schedule Ravine Parkway Project Special Assessment Public Hearing to the November 6, 2019 Cottage Grove City Council meeting. Mayor, I'll make that motion. All right, so I have a go. motion by Councilmember Mills, second by Councilmember Thede. All those in favor, sitting for by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, B is hazardous property assessments. And I'm not sure, uh, Joe, or is that Robin? We're moving right along here. Our finance director will be taking us through this. Actually, probably the next two, I'm assuming. I totally apologize. Um, before you tonight, uh, the f and I don't have a copy of the, the memo, I apologize. Uh, the first one is hazardous properties. Uh, the hazardous properties are properties that were um, identified it by city staff as um, hazardous properties that uh, had overgrown veg vegetation, um, illegal vehicles, et cetera. The, no the homeowners are notified of the um, discrepancy of the, of the problem. Uh, they are then, um, if they do not respond in a period of time, the city council identifies the um, actions to be taken and therefore the actions are taken and the properties are then assessed for the fees that it takes to um, correct the problem. Um, the items that are on tonight's agenda, there are two properties. Both properties were identified, um, asked to pay their invoices. Uh, they did not and therefore we are able to assess those properties for the costs of resolving the issues. I would ask you this evening to uh, identify those two properties or to hold a public hearing regarding those two properties and um, if no one speaks or if, if anyone speaks to take that into consideration and then to adopt the assessment role for those two properties as identified in the resolution. Okay, council any questions on this? All right, so I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Is there anybody that wants to speak on this particular item this evening? It's on these two properties. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and uh, council look for a motion. Mayor, I'll make the motion to adopt. I'll make the motion to adopt resolution 2019-116 to assess the costs associated with abatement of hazardous conditions from private properties. Second. All right, so we have a motion by Council Member Mills, second by Council Member Thede. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we'll move to C, which is tall weeds assessments. I will make a motion. Oh, actually, she's got it. We got to do a public hearing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. So similar to the hazardous properties, the city has an ordinance which uh, determines the uh, height of grass and hazardous or noxious weeds. Um, we call them obnoxious weeds, but uh, this ordinance requires that uh, homeowners and property owners keep their weeds in their tall grasses to a particular height, which I believe is like eight inches or 12 inches, something like that. And if they do not, then the code enforcement officer identifies them um, to be mowed. We have a contractor who goes out and mows them, and then we send an invoice to the property owner. Um, if the violation is once in a year, it's I believe $50 for the or, um, invoice. And if it's more than that, the, the amount for the mowing uh, increases exponentially basically. Um, the properties that you have before you this evening were identified as in violation of the ordinance. They were um, notified that they had 10 days to remedy the situation. They then um, were mowed by the city's contractor and the properties were invoiced. Now there are a number of properties that this happened to that they paid their invoices. Uh, the properties in front of you this evening are those properties that did not pay their invoices and therefore we are assessing their properties for the amounts that are identified in the memo for those various properties. I would ask you to hold the public hearing and then adopt resolution uh, 2019-115. The only comment I'll mention is I'm assuming based on what you said, the, uh, the amounts that I'm seeing here are 
higher than the 50 because they must have had to go back and mow multiple times? Um, that is correct. Okay. Also, we are able, because it is a one-year assessment, to increase to incur um, additional charges for interest and uh, penalty. Okay. All right. Any questions for staff on this one? Again, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. If there's anybody that wants to speak on this, is, on this item is welcome to do so. Anybody at all? All right, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing, and then I'll look for a motion, Council. Now I'll move <laughs> to adopt Resolution 2019-115 to assess the costs associated with the removal of tall weeds from private properties. All right, so I have a motion by Councilmember Thede. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilmember Dennis. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you Thank very you. much. I apologize for my... Um, inability to uh, do my job this evening, evidently. Thank you for your indulgence. All right, thanks. All right, uh, number 10 is bid awards. There are none this evening. Uh, 11 is regular agenda. We do have two items on the agenda this evening. Uh, a is Ravine Meadows, which is a zoning amendment and a preliminary plat. And uh, Mr. John Burbank is gonna walk us through this one. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. The application that I'll be presenting this evening is for the Ravine Meadows. It's a single family detached residential subdivision and a rezoning uh, amendment. The uh, subdivision is 26 lots. The developer is London Development LLC. And if you're looking to put a face on that group, it'd be Tim Thone and his son Ben was there in the back. And um, <laughs> so they are looking for a preliminary plan. So the site's located off of Military Road. Uh, right near where Mr. Stetchkon, who was here this evening, uh, was there. It's off of the Military Road, which will be former Military Road Historic Trailway Corridor in the future. And on the property, there, on the former Johnson property, there is a homestead and outbuildings. And the, the piece that Mr. Thone had owned for many years and been talking about developing when the time was right is right next door. So he's in control of both properties now and that's what's being proposed to be subdivided. Mr. Stetchkan's property is, is located right here. So again, with the preliminary plat, it's 9.85 acres. There's 26 single family lots. They vary from the smallest uh, minimum size of 8,847 square feet up to 22,180 square feet. There is an extension of Jeffrey Avenue that would run north and south and link into uh, the development to the south where Jeffrey Avenue is right here off of the Ravine Parkway, the newly installed Ravine Parkway. So with the land use, it's currently guided for low density residential, both in the 2030 and 2040 plans, and uh, which allows for one to four dwelling units per acre. Project has a proposed density of 3.2 units per acre. And again, there's no changes with the land use. What they are requesting is to change the zoning from AG1 to R4, low density residential. With that standard zoning district, uh, there are standards for developing the lots within that uh, development. They are found, if you look to the ordinance, this is what's right in the ordinance, and they're looking to basically meet what our ordinance says. So no plan unit development uh, for this project, it's a straight zoning request. Uh, they don't have all their builders lined up yet, but what they report is there'll be similar structures to what are being constructed in that area right now. Uh, they'll have multiple builders proposed, a stable of builders for the project, and bring in you know, custom type housing as a part of uh, that project. Access and right away, I mentioned Jeffrey Avenue, that's in orange. They'll be required to dedicate 33 additional right of way along the military road corridor, trail corridor. And then access would be to the north uh, with a connection and an extension of Jeffrey Avenue when that property ever develops. And east and west on the parkway or straight through into the, into the development to the south. There are utilities available. This is a utility map showing storm, sanitary, and water. And uh, again, it's available in front of the site here. Service from the project to the south. And you'd be able to extend that into the site, service the different residential units. Surface water management, standard to any of our developing properties. They've worked with the city and the engineers, uh, as well as the watershed district to provide infiltration and, uh, and retention for the surface water for the site. 
parks and open space. There's no parks currently planned for the site, so we'd be looking for a cash dedication of $3,400 per unit. This is our parks and open space plan for the Upper Ravine neighborhood. We've got the community, future community park off of the parkway. We've got some of the projects, Cedarhurst Meadows Park, and, um, and, and the Walter Star project, which will have some park and open space there. So basically following that plan doesn't call for a neighborhood park in this area. So we'd be looking for the cash dedication. For the existing trees that would be removed through the project, they would follow our newly adopted uh, tree mitigation ordinance. The proposed landscaping in the outlot for the watershed or for the, the stormwater pond, they'd be putting some additional landscaping in that area by water and then planting a bermed area along Mr. Stetchkon's property as they direct that water uh, towards the, the surface water management uh, pond. They do require the standard boulevard trees and we're looking for a sidewalk along the west side of the, of the proposed street. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward project. We are recommending that you pass uh, Ordinance 1013, uh, reguiding the rezoning the property from AG1 to R4, and to adopt Resolution 201918, approving the preliminary plat. Okay. Council, any questions on this particular uh, item? No. All right. Do you want anything to say? Or are you no. you good? Yeah. You got All any right. questions? All right, perfect, thank you. So uh, with that, I guess, uh, if there's no questions from council and, and no for, nothing for staff, I guess we can uh, move. I would we move have two motions, by the way. Pass ordinance 1013, approving the zoning amendment to change the zoning of 9.85 acres of land, including the parcel located at 9255 Military Road South and the parcel to the east from AG1 Agricultural Preservation to R4 Low Density Residential. All right, so I have a motion by Council Member Thede. Second. Second by Council Member Mills. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, and then number two. Mayor, I'll uh, make a motion to adopt resolution 2019-118, approving the preliminary plat for a detached single family residential subdivision to be called Ravine Meadows that would create 26 lots and one outlot. All right, so I have a motion by Councilmember Mills. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilmember Dennis. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, John. All right, and then B on our regular agenda is the Community Center Pre-Development Services. So, uh, Zach, Doctor, you're going to take us through, and Mr. Thone, thank, thank you. you. Good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, before you tonight is a request to consider Community Center Pre-Development Services to keep that, um, that quest moving along in anticipation of a 2020 referendum. So why, why, sh why should the council consider pre-development services? Uh, first and foremost is simply to educate the public. We need to answer the question of, of why are we doing this? Uh, the second portion, part of that is an obligation to assure voters that there is a need in the community for a community center, that the, study, that the city council and staff and commission and residents have studied uh, why a community center is needed and explaining that to the, to the residents. And then identifying impacts as well. Simply prudent to let voters know how this will impact them both pos positively and negatively, um, per or perceived negatively. Uh, create vision, and then, uh, then we need to unify the vision and the message in a very straightforward and easy to understand way for the public uh, to make an educated vote at the, at the referendum. So the plan is to guide and assist uh, key messaging and communications for the referendum question. Uh, develop site plan graphics, and then develop three artistic renderings of the building concept. I did leave you some examples of end products uh, at your at your uh, seats there. Um, hopefully, that explain a little bit of what we're trying to uh, what we're trying to accomplish. But please understand that obviously 
cash growth uh, process is going to be very unique. So what you see there isn't the end product that we'll be using. But um, so our unique, our process is unique. The community center we're talking about is unique. So we'll we'll be starting from stage one. So this is one of those situations where it's kind of like the duck on the water, where it may look like a very simple process. I only went through two slides, but there's a whole lot of paddling going on underneath. There's about 130 hours of work that's been identified by Leo A. Daly in their proposal um, to to help us bring uh, bring about this message and um, ed help educate the public on the question. So with that, I will stand for any questions the council might have. Okay. Uh, council. Oops. Thank you, Zach. Uh, council, any questions? Council well, Member Athidi. I was, uh, you know, when I looked at this, I'm not necessarily um, against the pre-development services. You know, I've seen a lot of different drawings and pictures and and while it may not represent exactly what the building would look like, I think it it uh, kind of represents, uh, uh, you know, kind of a block diagram and of what we've been talking about and and um, some other 3D elevations and so forth. So I guess my concern was is that, and you said 130 hours. I mean, I didn't see anything in the packet that really said, here's where that time is going to be spent. I mean, if it's just a matter of collecting what they've already done that we've paid for already and kind of putting in a different document, I would have been much more impressed with them to say, well, yeah, we can put some of that stuff together and provide it to you. And if, uh, unless, you know, unless it really gets to be a, you know, number of hours or certain amount and so forth, then, then we might have to individually charge per hour for it or something like that. Um, the other thing that kind of struck me a little bit is the way it's written up from Leo A. Daly is, is that uh, <clears throat> they're kind of assuming, uh, at least the way I read it, that, that they're going to get a contract. If this community center gets approved, they're going to get a contract to do all the rest of it. Uh, just wanted to make it very clear that that we're going to go out and, and we're going to get bids uh, to do the to do the work. So, um, I guess I would still like to. Again, I'm not against the pre-development services and putting some things together. I'm just uh, you know wondering, well, what are they going to do for 130 hours? You know, I, I mean, I'm, if if they're going to actually start recreating a bunch of stuff, or they're just pulling together stuff that they already have, or or you know. Councilman Thede, I can I can answer some of that. Uh, what they've laid out for me is, you know, part of it's just uh, that initial meeting it takes a couple hours just to get you know all the people on board and have that meeting to decide on where the path is going to go. Uh, so there's a couple hours doing that. There's about 40 hours of identifying stakeholder focus. So who are you messaging to? Why are you messaging to those groups? And 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 for what purpose? Uh, there's meetings with councils and commissions and volunteer groups. If those are necessary, that's about eight hours. Uh, developing the renderings alone is about 60 to 70 hours. Um, there's a lot of time in that. I'm not a professional in that field, but um, that's that's what they quote on there. And then developing the key message is about eight hours, which is an extremely important. Me uh, the messaging is extremely important, so that's about eight hours of work. And then there's the leave behind needs. You know things like um, you know modifications that might need to be done after after the messaging goes out, based on what we're hearing from the public. And then what are the next steps? Uh, whether the referendum is uh, voted yes or voted no and things like that. So there's about 12 hours there. So that's the accumulation of 130 hours. It adds up quickly. <laughs> and then I will say to Councilman Thede, uh, it is, it's been made very clear that uh, this pre-development services does not um, prelude in any way, shape, or form to um, design services moving forward. I was going to say, there would be a, for sure a bid process. There would not be. I mean, they can bid for it, but doesn't mean they get it. It's going to depend on what they, mm -hmm. how much they bid for. So any other questions for you? No, it just, it just still seems like a, a fair amount of, of hours. You know, and I, I've, I've done some design stuff and sometimes it can take a long time if you're creating it from scratch, but uh, yeah. Okay. So the only thing I'll just, you know, mention for my uh, for myself for the for this process is you know there's in the different things that Zach you were just kind of going through I think there's probably two what I consider very crucial pieces one is to finalize uh, with some process of who our partners are going to be in this project uh, because obviously 
I know I'm seeing a few of the different emails going back and forth with one particular entity is how much rent is this going to be versus here and so on and so forth. So I, I get we need to figure out all those numbers so we have a true number to bring to the voters uh, when, that, when that happens. And then two, and I think it was one, to be frank with you, it was one of the things that I think uh, was a miss on our case when we did the referendum in the last time, and that is not having something that is visually tangible to the public so that they can literally see what's what's being proposed. The only I, when I looked at even the little flyer that you had, that was our old flyer, it just says, you know, outdoor aquatics facility to be decided later where it was going to go. So we didn't really help ourselves back then, I don't think, uh, when when that process was going through back then. So I'd, I want to make sure that um, what we are going to present to the public is truly a, a, a vision of what the public um, has been listening about or hearing about. Um, and I think I might have mentioned a comment to you also about it is funny how when you put just boxes on a on a piece of paper, on an email, or on the newspaper, whatever, and people will say something that, well, I can't believe you don't have this or you don't have that. It's like, it is in there. It's in this proposed community center. So that's why I'm thinking when you talk about some of the things that's on that list, visually to be able to show the public, this is what we're talking about as part of this community center. And then the last piece I'll share of that is what's next. So whatever we decide you know, when we get to that point, here's what the community center is all about. We're going to do future expansions, you know, down the road. Where does that fit on the site? I think is important for us to all know. Um, so just because today there might be an entity or somebody or, you know, whether it's the Y or the county or whoever, you name it, uh, that isn't maybe going to be there when we start, but they might want to be there later. And so we, I want to make sure that we give them the opportunity, all these different entities, that we're not going to landlock ourselves like what's happened in a couple other communities where you just don't have the space now available to expand to the level of service that the community is looking for. So that's just my two cents. One, one other question. Yeah. So when updated. you say a lump sum fee of eighteen eight, so do we have to pay that all up front, or how does that get paid? Uh, typically it's invoiced as the services are rendered. Okay, so on it's a percentage not. Basis. We're not going to shell out eighteen thousand eight hundred dollars up front. And, okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, Councilmember uh, Dennis. Thank you, Mayor Zach. When we go back to the beginning of this project and started working with Leo A. Daly, who um, I just feel uh, has done a real good job for us up to this point, company with a very solid reputation. Um, this is an intricate project and it's substantial. So I don't recall when they mapped everything out, but my recollection seems to be that this was a part of the process down the line. Is that true? Or is this completely a, a, a different add-on for something that we didn't see or talk with him about before? It is not an add-on. I can't remember if it was actually in writing, but yes, this is something we were aware was going to be happening at some point. That, that's what I thought. Yeah. So it's just, it's an integral part of the overall process to get us to a finished product to bring before the people. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? So I guess at this point then, uh, Council, I'll look for a motion on this item. Mayor, I'll make the motion to authorize staff to enter into a professional services agreement with Leeway Daily for pre-development services for the Community Center Referendum Project for the lump sum of $18,800 plus reimbursables. All right, so I have a motion by Councilmember Dennis. Second. Second by Councilmember Mills. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is 12, thank you, Zach. Thank you. Uh, next is council comments or requests. I'll start with uh, Council Member Mills. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm gonna have Brian come up. He's gonna pull up some slides here. This afternoon at three o'clock, unfortunately I was not able to attend, but we had a photo session uh, and uh, dedicated a path to poetry uh, poem on one of our paths. So at three o'clock this afternoon, um, our, uh, Arts Commission Chair Joe Kvorik met with Melissa Soto, who is um, was leading up the po path to poetry, and our winner is there, and her name is Judy Lawthorne, um, and her path is or her poem was put on the path. It's at Hamark. It's kind of behind the playgrounds near the tennis courts, and I'm going to have um, Ryan go ahead. And
go to the next slide, and I'm going to read um, that poem that we have um, that she, she won with. It's, it reads, spring skies clouded and the rain fell to earth. Summer skies cleared and the sun gave birth to bright colored flowers and green, green grasses. Children playing outside as summertime passes. Families walking, baseball bats swinging, playgrounds and pools ready for swimming, riding a bicycle and popsicles galore, soccer, picnics, and campfires with s'mores. Longer days end with warm, starry nights, all part of summer when the sun shines bright. So kind of part of what we've been really putting into nice. play. Very lovely. That was very nice. Um, we had several uh, community members submit uh, poetry. In fact, there was another person in this room that submitted some poetry. Um, and But anyway, we were all so very excited. <laughs> We were also well, very excited to have so many poems um, and that we were able to um, honor Judy today uh, with, with the, the poem on the path. So just wanted to make mention of that going on. And then at our next Arts Commission, just before, if you want to come to that, we're going to have some artists from the community that their art is going to be going on display here in City Hall. Good. So it's very exciting to have the artists be recognized and That's come great. forth. No, beautiful saying, by the way. All right, anything else for you? That's it, thank right. you. Uh, Council Member Dennis. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and uh, Council Member Mills, if you uh, ever need to find another job to do, you could do professional reading of poems. Yeah, that's well, very well thank you. Very, thank very you. nicely done, and, and uh, great work by uh, by Judy for, uh, I mean, I, I'd love to be in that place, in that moment. Right? Yeah, very cool. Beautiful. All right, uh, well, Mayor, I've got a couple things here I'd, I'd like to talk about, and uh, I've had a few people in the community approach me recently, and they've been asking about um, storage of garbage cans. And I know that the city has an ordinance against that, and I know there was work at some point in the time put in, in the past, put into determining what would be considered appropriate or not. But what I'm interested in is if, uh, if we could, you know, have a dialogue uh, with the current council. Uh, in the form of a workshop coming up where we could just sit down as a team and talk about this and see see if this is still something that we need or want to do. Um, I do know that this is a, uh, a little bit of a challenge um, from a code enforcement standpoint because there's so many homes that have, you know, whether just people that just don't know or make a choice not to, to follow the ordinance, whatever it is. But um, I would I would really like to see if we could sit down as a group and have a conversation about that. So uh, as we have been doing here now as a process when there's a request made, um, I, would, uh, I would be happy to make a motion here to you uh, that we have a, a workshop to discuss that issue as a council team with staff. Okay. Uh, I've got a motion then by uh, Councilmember Dennis. Somebody want to second that? I'll second that. All right. Second by Councilmember uh, Mills. All those in uh, favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So we'll have a discussion about it. Thank Perfect. you, Mayor. And then a couple other things I have for us. Um, kind of rolling right along with, with code enforcement, um, one of the things that we attempt to do as a community is to keep our city looking neat and clean. And uh, as you know, there's if you drive any thoroughfare, there's a lot of signs that are out there. Um, some of them uh, are allowed, some of them are not. Uh, you know, there's a certain uh, painting company that I, I know that, uh, well, I'm looking at our city administrator, she knows what I'm talking about. So we have, uh, we have one code enforcement officer, and as most of us here in the room know, we have 36 square miles, which is a, a lot of territory for one single person to cover. So I'm just curious, um, you know, we, we like to promote a, a team dynamic here. Can we get some help from some of our other staff members uh, that, that are out driving around the community all the time? We've got several departments that are out all the time. And uh, we've got building inspectors that are out. Can, can we get some assistance maybe in that particular area to help that person out? Um, it would just, it would make that individual's job better and it would really help to keep the community looking clean and good. So I see the city administrator is nodding yes, so I'll, uh, I'll take it at that and accept that. Thank you. And then um, one additional thing, uh, going off of the, the code enforcement, my theme here tonight. So 
um, the, the vehicle that is used by that staff member, and I know as a city we always try to be safe, uh, is that vehicle, and I'll ask our city administrator, is that vehicle equipped with directional lights on the back of it or some type of flashing lights that, like we have on public works or, or our public safety vehicles? Okay, is that something that we could look at? Okay, to promote safety. All right, so that, that'll be the end of my, my code enforcement stuff. Um, I just wanted to share, kind of in the, in the same vein that uh, Mayor Bailey has shared with uh, the council, um, you know, being on TAB and Metro Cities and those types of things, um, I had a really uh, great honor bestowed upon me. Um, Kevin Johnson, who is the head of the, uh, the EMS training program for Inver Hills, uh, approached me and asked if I would be willing to join their, uh, their oversight board for academics. And I accepted that position and was approved onto that board. So I will look forward to working with those folks in that regard. And if any of our uh, folks in our public safety realm have uh, thoughts or ideas that they think would be beneficial to help teach those who are coming up as, as uh, new people entering the field, I would certainly love to hear from you. So that's what I have. Right, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Councilmember Member Thede. All right. And I'm just going to, because I, I seem to have asked, We've discussed before that we, when people are out, public works, everybody, they they see things, don't they report them back? Mayor, members of the council, um, one of the challenges we do have is some of those signs, um, some of our agencies that are um, getting public messaging out, we wanted to ensure that those were not collected. And so we wanted to ensure that there's uniformity in how it's actually policed. And so um, we had kind of pulled back to ensure that um, there weren't any um, inconsistencies, but I think there's some uh, opportunities for us to revisit that decision uh, to ensure that we can pick up the signs in a more timely fashion. Okay, thanks. Um, other than that, uh, I guess the one thing I mentioned is that a week from Saturday on October 26th is the Monster Bash Parade. And it's going to be a ghoulish good time. And uh, again, it uh, starts at 10 a.m. in the morning and, and goes from the uh, uh, administrative center uh, at um, for the school district down to Applebee's. And uh, so uh, uh, I tell everybody to find your best costume and, and come on out and... Uh, uh, usually I get told that I, I don't need a costume, and so, that, you know, it's, <laughs> but uh, at any rate, so uh, that's a week from Saturday, 10 a.m., October 26th. Uh, come on out and have a good time. All right, thank you. So I can knock that off my list. I want to make you sure can you can knock got that it. off your list. Perfect. So I have uh, three, three items uh, this evening. The first two are just general, and then I'll need a, uh, a motion on the third. I'll share with the, the council in a minute. Uh, first of all, and thank you, Pete, Here's for... Okay, um, uh, Pete had uh, sent me a, a text real quick because I was making sure we had the correct day. Uh, for those that may be not aware, Afton Apple has been working with our public safety departments, not just us, actually county and all these other ones too, and uh, donating a certain amount of the proceeds from the uh, corn maze uh, to the, whatever the local jurisdiction or their police, fire, EMS, in our case, it would be to the uh, public safety board. The original date that was planned to have it a couple weeks back was uh, not a very nice day, <laughs> if you think about snow and all that. And so they did, uh, on that particular day, they did cancel it, and they have rescheduled that now for Sunday, October 27th, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And again, the proceeds for the corn maze, a portion of it, will be donated to the Public Safety Board here in Cottage Grove. So obviously Saturday we got the the uh, Halloween Monster Bash Parade, and then on Sunday, it would be great to see people go out to uh, Afton Apple and, and support the public safety team by checking out the, the maze, and again, the proceeds go to the Public Safety Board. Uh, the other item I wanted to mention, too, is the Ice Arena Grand Opening is this coming uh, Sunday uh, from 5.30 to 7.30 uh, at uh, the Cottage Grove Ice Arena. It's, uh, there's some videos out right now that are kind of highlighting some of the, the changes. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> The difference that uh, Ice Arena looks like in there, and it's really cool that we had a, uh, our partners with the uh, Athletic Association, Hockey Associations, to really add some enhancements to that uh, the main sheet of ice for the local hockey teams, the Wolfpack and the and the local uh, the Park High team. So it's uh, I encourage everybody to stop out, uh, check out your Ice Arena. It's again 5:30 to 7:30 that evening. Uh, we'd be doing kind of an official re uh, ribbon cutting re grand opening. And uh, come walk through and check out 
uh, what uh, this great amenity is within our community. Uh, and then uh, lastly, um, I, I wanted to share kind of an info thing and then ask for the council's support on a motion. So first of all, as I think most of the public may be aware, I hope anyway, um, uh, uh, council member Wayne Butt, who unfortunately is not here this, this evening, uh, he is not signed up for re-election. And so we will be having a new election on November 5th. Uh, and uh, once that election happens on November, November 5th, um, we have to like ratify the, uh, approve the vote and, and such, what do we, canvas the vote, thank you. Uh, and so at that particular time, what will happen is Wayne uh, Butt will then submit his resignation, which will be effective November 20th at 7 p.m., which is the second council meeting in November. Uh, and that is when our, uh, whoever our, our new uh, uh, council member will be sworn at, at that particular time, and this will be kind of a seamless process. So. The thing, though, is, is during the, this time, I'll just read it verbatim, is the city is in the process of interviewing candidates for a community development director. One of the anticipated steps in the process is for the council to conduct the final rounds of interviews. Um, as some of you may know, there is a council seat, as I said, on the ballot November 5th, and we have a new city council member. However, that person will not officially take their oath of office until November 20th. The final interviews for the community development director will likely occur during the week of November 11th. And by then, we will know who has been elected to the council. Uh, I, as the mayor, suggest that the newly elected city council member be allowed to participate in the interview panel since they will be working with this director as well. It is not expected that there will be a vote taken after the round of final interviews, but if there was a vote, the newly elected council member would not be able to participate in that vote. If the council is okay with allowing the person who is elected to the council uh, to participate in the interview panel for the community development director prior to taking the oath of office, the city attorney has suggested that the council make a motion to memorialize this process. So if the council here is in favor of that, I would just ask that uh, somebody make a motion to allow whoever the new council member may be um, to be part of the interview process. I'll make the motion, Mayor, that we allow the council member elect to be involved in the interview process. All right, so I have a motion by Council Member Dennis. Second. Second by Council Member Mills. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, that was it for uh, council comments requests. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you did say Council Member Thede had one more item. So I just remembered I should mention that uh, something new that the Cable Commission is doing oh, yeah. this year, uh, SWCTC, uh, is they're having a terror -thon. And so there's 10 different movies stretching all the way from like 1922 to, to 1980 uh, that they're going to start showing on Tuesday, October 22nd, at 7 p.m., or whoops, wait a minute. Nope, that's not right. Where's his first note? Okay. Wrong time. Okay, so on channels 14 and 16 on October 25th, beginning at 5 p.m., and airing until midnight on October 28th, just straight through, there will be a, uh, uh, then an encore presentation beginning at 5 p.m. on October 30th. That'll continue through midnight on November 1st. And it's just going to scare the heck out of you, some of these movies. And so you want to get make sure you have enough popcorn, enough drinks and so forth, and maybe some coffee to keep you awake, maybe some toothpicks to keep your eyes open, something like that. Gar and garlic? Garlic, maybe you know. And I, and I heard that, that actually... The uh, uh, kind of the MC that's announcing the movies, uh, they actually were able to get Count Sill member to actually, you know, announce the movies and so forth. Uh, so, you know, you, you got it. You got to, you know, make note of that. And What's watch funny and stuff. is I'm looking at this audience and I see some people are like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then I see other faces over like, what are you talking about? <laughs> You'll just have to watch and find out. What can I say? Or you're going to have to move to Cottage Grove, I guess. I don't know. Or go watch online. So, all right. Well, that's cool. That's different. We haven't, they haven't yeah. done that before, so that's kind of cool. So. 
All right. So uh, next on our agenda was a workshop session that is uh, open to public. There isn't any this evening. Uh, 14 is a workshop session that is closed to the public. And we do have one this evening, which is the city administrator's performance evaluation. And I will be closing the meeting uh, when we do that here, uh, pursuant to Minnesota uh, statute 13D.05, subsection 3A, to conduct a performance evaluation of our city administrator, Jennifer Levitt. So uh, the council and Jennifer will be moving to the conference room to complete that here in a few minutes, and we will adjourn there. So everybody have a happy Halloween. There you go. There you go. All right, thank you.